So this is uh, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Yeah, so uh, I had this uh, as a kid. Uh, I played it. I don't. At the time, I played it quite a bit. Uh, so, you know, I was kind of. You know, I grew up with the Super Nintendo, and uh, this was one of the games I had on it from fairly early on. Uh, I think I didn't get it anywhere near release date. I think uh, my. I think my cousin had got it used, and he played it a bunch. Uh, and then eventually he got like sick of it or whatever uh, or I think at some point he got an N64 and uh, I didn't end up getting one for a couple of years uh, and so he gave me like all his games uh, so I played this quite a bit uh, I actually uh, beat it several times uh, and then since then Since then, I haven't beat it uh, like that many times. Uh, I've kind of played through it uh, every couple of years, maybe. You know, I probably beat it like a dozen times as a kid, and then uh, once I got the N64, uh, or since then, I've probably beat it, I don't know, two or three times, maybe. So, uh, I'm not like super uh, you know, knowledgeable about it although I do so I may I may get lost uh, a little bit but I think I probably should for the most part be okay uh, and it's not a terribly difficult or complicated game anyways uh, I did want to uh, the reason why I'm playing this is I wanted to play a, you know do a let's play of a Zelda game and just kind of like you know go through them and uh, talk about the different Zelda games and stuff uh, but I wasn't sure exactly which one to do. Uh, there, uh, my first choice would have been the original game. Uh, that's my favorite of all the Zelda games. Uh, well, the problem with that is uh, I haven't uh, I haven't played it that many times because for me the. Like, the attraction of that game is the exploring and stuff like that uh, and so I think it would kind of ruin it if I just played it constantly and I uh, knew where everything was there would be no more exploring uh, and so there is you know I know there are uh, randomizers and I've tried one of them but uh, I think the problem then with playing a game where you're really exploring is that it's kind of hard to do a let's play of that uh, and actually like talk about stuff because uh, you end up uh, you know you're trying to draw maps and take notes and uh, you know 
watch carefully, you know, where everything is and stuff like that. Uh, and so I did, uh, I did try and do like a let's play of a uh, Zelda 1 randomizer, but, uh, you know, I found that uh, there'd just be, you know, long stretches of silence where I'm just like, you know, not even moving. I'm just like looking at my map and stuff and trying to figure out where I should go. Uh, which is kind of boring, and also, you know, I would be talking and running around and not really remembering where I should be going, and uh, so it was kind of hurting it on both ends. It was making the game less fun to play, and, uh, you know, making the uh, Let's Play kind of boring. The alternative, I guess, would have been... Uh... Oops. That's okay. Should pay a bit more attention. Uh, okay. Uh, good. I'm just starting off here. I was ho uh, hoping I wasn't gonna start off back at like the house or something. Yeah, the alternative would have been to just like edit out the uh, long uh, stretches of silence or whatever. But uh, yeah, I generally prefer not to uh, have to do a whole bunch of editing. Yeah, so I wasn't, uh, and the other alternative I thought of was, uh, you know, play Zelda a couple times, and then just go through it, uh, like, you know, like, kind of practice it. Uh, that's kind of what I did with the Splunker, uh, Let's Play. I, I played through it several times, and then recorded, and then I, you know, I knew it well enough that I could just talk while I was playing, and, uh, go through it fairly quickly. Uh... But I did want to kind of talk about like all the Zelda games and stuff like that. And uh, you know, if you're going through Zelda and you really know it, uh, you know, even if you're not like a speedrunner, it only takes like an hour or two. Uh, so I thought that was kind of short. So that kind of ruled out the first one. Uh, the uh, and I wanted it to be kind of be like a more kind of main, uh, well-known Zelda game. Like I didn't want to do, you know, the, the second one or uh, I don't know, like Minish Cap or something like that. Uh, I just wanted to be kind of you know more uh, representative of the series or whatever. Uh, I thought about doing Ocarina of Time, uh, but that one takes uh, fairly long to beat. Uh, I don't know, on like how long to beat, it says it's like 25 hours or something, and I thought that was a little bit too long. I wanted something kind of more around 10 hours. Uh, and like I do, I do know Ocarina of Time fairly well. Uh, I beat it probably as many times as I've beaten this. Uh, but just the the length was uh, a little bit off-putting. Uh, plus, if I am gonna play uh, Ocarina of Time again anytime soon, I may want to try and play through it, uh, you know, with the VR. Uh, like what I was playing uh, Mario 64. Uh, that or using like a high def texture pack or something like that. Uh, but if I was doing a Let's Play, I wanted it to kind of be like, you know, the kind of representative version, which would be like just, you know, as it is. Yeah, so I didn't want to do like, you know, a high def pack or, you know, playing like, a, I don't know, the emulated version of the 3DS one or something like that. Yeah, so that's kind of why I ended up deciding on this, because uh, I, I know this one fairly well. Uh, 
and you know after the first or second after the second Zelda they're not as uh, you know exploration heavy so it's not really uh, I don't know as big of a loss to just play the later ones over and over uh, and this one it supposedly takes around like I think 10 hours to beat or so so that's not too bad Of course, the other ones like uh, you know Breath of the Wild is just uh, too big and too long. Uh, I wanted to hopefully do like an entire Let's Play, uh, but unless I did like some like speed run, you know, right to the end, uh, you know, way of playing, I wouldn't be you know Breath of the Wild would just take too long. Plus, I've you know I've played it a couple times recently. Uh, you know, and so I, I didn't think it was really a good idea. Uh, and in most of the other Zeldas, I've only actually played once or twice, maybe. So, uh, you know, and they're longer, so it'd be, you know, again, long and lots of me, uh, you know, not exactly knowing where to go. So that's, that's why I'm uh, doing this one. Yeah, so I do, mo I do mostly, I think, know where to go. Uh, I guess we'll see. It has been probably, I'd say, uh, five years maybe since I've played this. Ten. So I am probably a bit rusty, but I did play it a ton as a kid, so hopefully uh, a lot of it's ingrained. So I figured I'd, I don't know, just kind of start, uh, I don't know, talking about the different Zelda games, uh, one by one, and then after that, uh, uh, just kind of more, uh, you know, general overarching Zelda thoughts. So I think now we uh, go meet uh, Sarasha Rahala or whatever in the uh, uh, desert. Okay, I guess it's the village first. Uh, yeah, so anyways, uh, I guess going through the Zelda games, uh, I guess I'll just start with the Zelda 1. So that's one, I did have it as a kid. Uh, uh, I got, uh, I had an NES since, I don't know, uh, before I can remember, basically. 
and then I got a SNES when I was fairly young. Uh, yeah, I got a SNES when I was fairly young, like, I don't know, five or six maybe. I think like five. Uh, but at that point the SNES was still out for a couple years. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I didn't play the NES a ton. I'm supposed to find the uh, Elder. Alright, uh, I think this is where I get the... Uh, I use the Magic Dust here to uh, uh, get uh, extended magic meter. Alright, yeah, I didn't, uh, I guess I am a bit rustier than, uh, I thought, because, uh, for some reason I thought bombs and boomerang would both be, like, dungeon items. Uh, I guess not. Uh, probably should have maybe researched a little bit more. Uh, Yeah, so anyways, I, uh, yeah, I didn't, I played this, this the NES a little bit, but not, uh, not a ton, like, unless it was, like, a really good game that I was really, really, you know, it was fairly easy for a kid to play, and I was, you know, really into it, I didn't really play it that much, like, I had, I don't know, probably 10 or 15 NES games, uh, and most of them were, you know, fairly good ones. Uh, but still, I only really played, uh, like, Super Mario Bros. 1, uh, 3, uh, Ninja Turtles, uh, you know, and, uh, I think that was basically it. I, I had Zelda, but, uh, it was just too difficult for me as like a little kid, you know, five years old or whatever. I just, you know, didn't know where to go. It never occurred to me to draw a map or anything. Uh, you know, so I just didn't really play it much. Uh, I did, the only, uh, I think I did one time beat the first dungeon. Uh, because I, uh, I remember, uh, I don't know, a while ago we were, like, cleaning some stuff, and I found, uh, you know, uh, some old, like, school stuff, like, from kindergarten and stuff, uh, and, uh, at one point I had drawn, like, a, a picture of, like, the, uh, the boss of the first dungeon, the, uh, dragon thing uh, that you fight. Uh, he's facing sideways and you uh, he like shoots fireballs. I, I'd you know drawn that and I had you know beaten him and gotten that Triforce but uh, that was like the extent of uh, uh, how far I got in that. Alright so Right, I gotta get uh, over there now. Alright, uh, I'm not gonna try and get like 100% or anything. Because uh, that would be, I don't remember where every last thing is, so that would just be a whole bunch of added uh, time. But uh, I do remember where a fair bit of stuff is, so. 
uh, hopefully I'll be able to, you know, uh, get most of it anyways. I think this must be where that, uh, this is where the book is, I believe. I need the, uh, yeah, the Pegasus boots to get up there. Uh, there's a heart piece in there. Yeah, so I, I got to the first dungeon sometimes. Uh, there's a heart piece in here. Okay, uh, I don't know if I'll, uh, yeah, I guess I'll try a couple times. I'm pretty sure there's a heart piece in here, so... I might as well continue until I get it, or I'm out of uh, rupees. Okay, uh, one rupee, fifty rupees. Okay, so there's one more possible item. Uh, that, and I'm not sure, uh, I seem to recall the, uh, my uh, Zelda cartridge being somewhat finicky when it came to saving. Uh, okay, well, so there's 1, 20, and 50, so that's, uh, unless there's other things that can swap out, maybe there isn't actually a uh, heart in there. Uh, well, I guess, uh, 20, 20 rupees, three different options, uh, a total of 71 for the, uh, total prize, so, uh, I guess, statistically on average, you would gain rupees with that, assuming it's, uh, you know, spread out even. Uh, is there... No, I think I need the mirror to get, uh, get that there. Yeah, so I guess it is, uh, statistically you would gain rupees if you just keep doing that. Uh, yeah, so my, my cartridge was, I think, finicky, either with the, either I wasn't doing, like, the hold reset before quitting, and it was, uh, messing up the, uh, uh, saving, or, uh, it just, I don't think it would have a bad battery already at that point, but, uh, I don't know. Yeah, so one thing I wonder about with the saving, I've, uh, since I've been, like, kind of studying, uh, the NES, uh, and programming and how it all works and stuff, uh, the way they saved is they just had uh, extra RAM that was just in the cartridge. Uh, and it just has a battery attached to that RAM, that extra RAM chip. Uh, and so then the, you know, the CPU just writes to that RAM whatever it wants to keep saved. Uh, and then, you know, you turn it off in the RAM because it's got the battery in it. it you know, keeps your data. Uh, the problem is it's because it's just reading and writing to it exactly as it would write to any other, you know, the normal RAM or, you know, anything like that. Uh, it doesn't have any, like, uh, you know, there's no uh, write sequence you have to do. Uh, so when you turn off the power, the, uh, the voltage would be dropping in the CPU. Uh, and once it gets below its, uh, you know, minimum operating voltage, uh, the CPU is just gonna kinda go nuts and start, uh, you know, basically doing, you know, random, uh, operations and stuff, uh, 
And that could include, uh, you know, writing to your uh, save. Uh, at least that's what I... That's what I assume is happening. I haven't specifically read uh, what the cause of it was, but uh, that would make sense. Uh, because I know lots of other, uh, you know, flash chips and stuff that you get, uh, they, uh, they have specific uh, write sequences you have to do where it's, uh, you know, in order to enable writing to it temporarily, you have to send a string of specific bytes. Uh, and then you can write uh, your data to it. Uh, so that means if the if the chip's going nuts and just uh, writing randomly or whatever, uh, it's never gonna uh, actually uh, write any data. Uh, but the you know the uh, early uh, NES save RAM didn't have that. At least that's what I'm assuming is happening. It could just it could be some other uh, phenomenon. Uh, I think uh, I think later games did improve that, where uh, uh, they were more resilient to that. So maybe they added some extra circuitry to uh, you know prevent that from happening, where you had to. Uh, you had to write some, maybe there was like a mapper chip or something, you had to write some specific byte to it, uh, and then it would uh, enable the write on the, the save RAM. I suppose that would be one way of doing it. But yeah, uh, I, yeah I, uh, I think I lo ended up losing my Zelda saves fairly often. I think that was kind of another reason why I never uh, really got far into it, because it seemed like it always... Uh, uh, I was always having to start again. Uh, I was just checking. Uh, I know I'm supposed to go up north, but uh, for some reason I thought there was a uh, cracked wall or something over here. With the heart. Anyways, I guess I'll head into the first dungeon. Yeah, I'm gonna... Hopefully, I guess within the next half hour or so, I'll be able to beat the first dungeon and then uh, break the recording. Uh, I've got to make sure to do shorter recording segments. Uh, uh, when I was doing the Mario RPG, uh, there was a couple times when I went an uh, hour and a half or two hours in one uh, recording stretch. Uh, and that ended up causing problems editing. Uh, it was, uh, I don't know, it, it would just get way too slow and it would take forever to do anything and uh, uh, there was a couple times where it uh, it would like crash, uh, resolve, uh, yeah, so I've got a no more two hour segments. So hopefully I'll be able to break after I uh, beat this dungeon. Or at least temporarily, just to, uh, I don't know, I may keep going today, but uh, I don't want a two hour long file. Yeah, so I didn't, uh, I never beat one as a kid. Uh, the next time I ended up trying to play it was uh, sometime after I'd gotten the GameCube. Uh, my sister got a GameCube as well. Uh, and at that time, uh, they were doing a, uh, that's when they had the Zelda collector disc or whatever, where they had the, uh, the four Zelda games, uh, or four of them, I guess. They had, uh, Zelda 1, Zelda 2, uh, A Link to the Past, or Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Uh, A Link to the Past wasn't on it for some reason. Uh, and she got that when she got her uh, GameCube, so I played it a bit. Uh, and again, I never ended up beating Zelda 1. Uh, I played it a little bit. I think at that point I probably did end up beating a couple more dungeons. 
Uh, but I still never, uh, like, really uh, went through it. Because uh, I was still fairly young at that point. And I, you know, I still didn't get the idea that, okay, you're just supposed to just draw a map and then, in, you know, you draw a map and take notes, it's not hard. But I was still trying to go through it like, uh, you know, just mindlessly go forward and it'll just tell you where to go and everything. Uh, that was actually my first time playing uh, Zelda 2 as well. Uh, although I, I played even less of that, uh, because it's even harder than one. I think I, uh, I don't I just kind of ran around in the first area and like gained a level and then died and quit. Uh, and I, yeah, I don't think I even, I don't, uh, I don't think I played uh, Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask on that disc either that much, just because I had already beaten them and I still had my N64 hooked up and everything. Uh, the, the, the disc did not get much use. <laughs> and which was kind of, I don't know, ironic because I remember, like, I really remember really wanting the disc so I could play those games. Uh, you know, and we, we drove all around trying to find it, see if there's anyone selling it loose and everything. And, uh, and then it just happened that uh, my sister got it when she got her GameCube. Uh, and then, yeah, so I finally got the disc and just never played it. So uh, I don't think the disc is that great, though. Anyways, uh, it's the... You know, there's better way. There's like tons of other ways to play the two NES games, uh, and uh, the N64 games both have uh, emulation problems, uh, especially Majora's Mask. I seem to recall it being really bad. Uh, like there was all kinds of sound problems and stuff. Which. Yeah, that's actually kind of another thing that uh, kind of bugs me is uh, there's a lot of people who, you know, they just, they hate emulation and they're like, oh, you know, anything's better than playing it on your PC on an emulator. Uh, I always want to play the original thing. And then, uh, you know, Nintendo comes out with some, some like really half-assed, uh, you know, emulation thing like that. And they're like, oh, it's, it's the uh, official... Uh, you know, this is official, it's great, we can finally play these games again. But a lot of the official uh, emulators are just so, like, you know, they're so bad usually. They've got, uh, they've always got all kinds of bugs in them, and uh, uh, a lot of times they're really missing features that are just common in other emulators, like you know, ZSNES 20 years ago had like save states and fast forward and cheats and everything. And we're just getting to the point now where, uh, you know, official emulators are having like fast forward and rewind and stuff like that and cheats. And, well, actually, they'd even, they don't even usually have cheats because, uh, yeah, I, I can't imagine Nintendo will ever put like any kind of like Game Shark uh, cheat functionality in uh, in any of their emulators. But yeah, like the I don't know, all these official emulator things are always kind of uh, they they always kind of suck, and it's always like it's so disappointing to see people be like, oh, I you know I can't stand emulators, but these are official, so they're good and. You know, they'll be like, oh, you know, unofficial emulators have bugs and stuff. They're just, uh, you can't count on them being the real thing. And then, uh, you know, Nintendo comes out with some just horrible... What is down here? Hmm. I don't know if I had uh, gone down there before or not. I uh, wish I had the bug net. I could have caught a couple fairies. Yeah, but that's kind of another thing I just want to, I don't know, talk about sometimes, just, uh, I don't know, emulation and everybody's kind of, 
I don't know, everybody gets really weird about it, so... So I didn't, uh, I didn't end up playing one much on that, uh, then, uh, it was probably, I don't know, some years later, I ended up actually, like, being like, okay, I'm gonna, you know, I, at that point I'd beaten several more of the Zelda games, uh, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna beat all the Zelda games, you know, I'm gonna go back through the ones that I never played, uh, and I'm gonna beat them. Uh, and so I went through one then, and I ended up just loving it. Uh, it. One is, you know, definitely my favorite Zelda game. Uh, but yeah, the thing with it is, you know, you have to just, like, pay attention. You, uh, uh, you know, you watch and you uh, draw a map and you take notes and uh, and then it's not too difficult you just have to do that uh, but people they go and they're like uh, you, you know they don't know where to go and they're not taking notes or anything and they just wander around and they're like well you know there's how are you supposed to know where to go like there's no partner telling you where to go Uh, and, you know, the thing that really annoys me is the, uh, oh, you gotta burn every bush, uh, bomb every wall, but you don't. You just have to, uh, you know, pay attention to what's going on. Uh, all of the major, uh, all the, like, the major things that you need, like the... Uh, the items and the dungeons, uh, they're in really obvious places. Like the one, uh, the one bush that you have to burn, uh, to get in the one dungeon, it's, uh, the only tree at, like, a dead end that's in a spot that you will go through, like, dozens of times during the game. Like, you'll be going by this one tree at this one dead end, uh, and then... Uh, there's a guy in one of the dungeons that says, like, oh, the tree at the dead end is the secret or whatever, so... Uh, you know, you'll you'll find it. Plus, that's for, like, dungeon, I don't know, 7 or 8 or whatever. So you've got plenty of time. It's not like they're trying to... It's not like they've hit dungeon 1 from you, and so you're just, like, missing it and then getting, like, stomped in dungeon 2 or whatever. Uh, you know, you've got the whole game to kind of figure it out. Right, where's, uh... Right, I gotta go do the other two. Uh... Yeah, I guess I'll head down to the uh, southwest. Uh, I think that's the next one I'm supposed to do. Actually, I'm not too sure on just how, uh... Uh, non-linear this one is. I know I've always done it in kind of the the same order. Oh, it's a good thing I talked to him. I didn't remember where you got those. Uh, but yeah, I uh, I just I don't know why I talked to him. I was like, oh, okay, might as well. I wasn't really thinking, but yeah, it's uh, a good thing I didn't uh, miss those because. Uh, yeah, I knew I needed them in order to go get the, uh, the book in that one, uh, library spot, uh, in order to get into the sand place, but, uh, yeah, uh, that was close. Yeah, and then all the, uh, you know, all these kinda important stuff, but not, like, uh... Uh, really, you know, you don't need it to beat the game, but it's still good. Like, all, all the heart pieces and, and stuff in Zelda 1. 
they're in also fairly like conspicuous places. Like there'll be, you know, one single piece of wall jutting out uh, in in a room, and that like that's where you have to bomb. Or there'll be like, uh, you know, it'll be under like a, an armo statue or whatever. Uh, or there'll be like, you know, two trees on a screen and one of them will have uh, a heart piece under it. It's all like stuff like that. You're not just doing like some random like, uh, or usually you're not doing like some random like one tree out of 50 on the screen. Uh, so that's where I gotta go next. Uh, oh, and another thing with like the dungeons, or you know, another one is like the dungeon nine or whatever uh, at Spectacle Rock, and that's where you go through like four screens in a row in like a straight hallway, and then you get to a dead end that has like, uh, you know, nothing but like a big rock in the middle, and so you're supposed to bomb the rock to get into the dungeon or whatever, and so it's like, yeah, obviously there's going to be something there. Like, just, you know, pay attention and think. Yeah, most of the, like, totally random, like, you know, there's uh, a big flat, uh, you know, wall and one random spot on it you can bomb to get into. Like, most of those are just, uh... Uh, you know, money-making game or uh, door repair charge or whatever. So it's not really uh, like that big of a deal. Okay. Uh... Okay. Uh, I was just checking. I didn't remember if you could do uh, self-damage in this. Or something with these guys? Maybe in the dark world? I don't know. Ooh, that was close. Uh, I only did that because I thought this might be where you get the bug net. Uh, I don't remember where that is. Anyway, uh, I guess I'll head south to the uh, desert. I think, uh, I think that's another uh, dark world thing. Uh, I think if I talk to him in the dark world, he follows me or something. desert now. Uh, I guess I'll just see what's in here. Uh, I think there must be, I think there's something in here.
rupees. Oh, heart. Alright, uh, so I think this is the next dungeon. Yep. Alright, uh, I can take a little break here to break the recording, uh, and then I'll try and beat the next dungeon.